Mother-in-law called me a fake woman because I couldn't give her grandchildren. Hi, it's me again. I'm the attorney Dill whose mill broke into her home office and read through a case file and proceeded to casually discuss it during lunch and then got immediately thrown out of the house. Remember me? Ah yes, it's ringing bells isn't it? Hello, old friends. I've named her Piercing Patty because of her pension for piercing attorney-client privilege. And also because, fuck her, her real name is Patricia. Does it feel good to have your privacy compromised Patty? Yeah, my client probably didn't like it either, you nosy bitch. I deleted my posts because I quite like my job and wish to keep it but you guys kind of get the gist from the previous paragraph so let's play some catch up. Last you heard of me I was trying my very best to forgive her because up until then she had been a very, good? No, that's not it. Adequate. She was a very adequate mill to me. Well, now she's number one on my blacklist followed closely by people who stick their chewed gum on the underside of tables and people who don't like dogs. This is the saga of how she and I came to be NC. It is very long with a lot of moving parts so I will likely have to break this story into several posts. Piercing Patty, PP for efficiency, has a younger sister, AIL, who in turn has a daughter, CIL. Ale is a nice lady, but our relationship consists of very polite conversation every other Thanksgiving so I don't consider us very close. Ale and PP live in Southern State. DH and I live in much larger, more urban coastal state. Sil currently attends college in our city. She is a very bright young woman and I've grown to be very fond of her. Since we are the only family Sil has in the area, we get the pleasure of hosting her for long weekends during holidays like MLK when a three-day weekend is nice but would not warrant a trip all the way home for a college student. It's great. She gets to come do laundry and I have someone to talk to about my guilty pleasure, celebrity gossip. We feed her. She walks the dog for us. Sometimes I treat her to a Monty Petty, and then we send her back with clean clothes and some leftovers. Ale has expressed how grateful she is that we open our home to her kid. It's no problem at all Ale. It truly is our pleasure as your kid is awesome. Well, about two months ago Sil was struck by a drunk driver as she was driving home from class. It was bad. The car looked like a crumpled piece of paper. When I went to the tow yard to get insurance figured out, and I saw how her vehicle looked, I felt like the wind was knocked out of me. We were very lucky. She only suffered from a broken leg and fractured wrist but it could have been so. So, so much worse and I honestly cannot even talk about the accident without devolving into pure, unadulterated rage. Naturally, Ale was in a frenzy and needed to see her daughter ASAP. Now, this part is unconfirmed but the story is that Ale was so emotional about the whole ordeal she asked PP to come along for support. I think the more obvious reality is that PP invited herself along and Ale didn't have the capacity to say no to her because um, hello, her child is injured? PP, I'm onto you. All those times I thought I was being paranoid? I wasn't, I see you now clear as day. You are committed to the long con. I know this won't make sense to you guys yet but it will in my next few posts. DH and I obviously got to the hospital first. We saw Sil, made sure she was okay. DH stayed with her while the doctors did doctor things and I went off to do lawyer things because if you think you can get drunk and t-bone the only other person in my life who even knows the name of all the Kardashians, you got another thing coming? Ale and PP arrive mid-afternoon the next morning. They literally book the next flight out. Cool, I get it. But we did call you guys to tell you that Sil was pretty much A-OK -okay so maybe you could have slowed your roll a bit and plan this trip a little more carefully. As in, where are you gonna stay when you get into town Ale and PP? Of course you expect IT to be my house. Why wouldn't it be? It's not like I banned PP from it for breaking into my home office and doing shit that would get my metaphorical ass kicked by the state bar or anything. But since Syl is in the hospital, I'm the one that's gonna look like the asshole for following through with my rules. Next up? Part 2, PP almost gets arrested twice in Part 3, The Unforgivable Thing. Update 2, Piercing Patty almost gets arrested. Twice. So last we left off there was a small family reunion at the hospital. Syl, DH, me, Ale, and the star of our show, Piercing Patty. Ale came swooping into the hospital just momming it up left and right. She was fluffing pillows, talking to doctors, calling whoever it is you need to call when your kid is fucked up. Meanwhile, PP is sitting in the corner acting really tired. Now, I say acting really tired because it was her comical adaptation of how a tired person would act. She was dramatically yawning, stretching her arms, rubbing her eyes, she looked like a French mime. She didn't say it outright, but I knew she wanted to go home with me and DH. 2. Fucking. Bad. As soon as I saw that Syl was being cared for by her doting mother, I was ready to peace out. I was wiped. I gave DH the signal we use at cocktail parties to indicate let's GTFO and we put on our coats. PP stops us and has the audacity to say, well what about me? Uh, what about you, PP? For once, for once, for goddamn once, none of this is about you. Where am I supposed to stay? Fucking, don't you creatures live in a cookie tree or some shit? I pause for a second and realize it's not about me either. Fully ignoring PP. I turn to Ale and ask her where she had intended on staying. Ale tells me she plans on staying at the hotel adjacent to the hospital because they didn't rent a car and she wanted to be accessible to her. Daughter. You know, like a normal person, 
So there you go, PP. If the real reason you came was to help Ale then I guess your ass is staying at that hotel too. But alas, logic does not shame a just novel. PP, can I come home with you guys to rest for a few hours? DH shoots me a glance because he knows I'm about to pop off and he giving me the go easy eyes. Me, no. PP, hi I not? Me, because Ale needs help with her daughter, that's the sole reason you came isn't it? Ha, bitch, I know it ain't. You mad we skipped 2017 holiday season with you and you want to get back into my house. Over my dead body. PP, oh, Ale is fine without me for a few hours. Me, then why did you even come? Anyways, DH and I don't have time to show for you back and forth all day. We have a lot of work to catch up on and we're going home. PP, oh, I'll just call a cab later. What do you kids call it? A goober. You know damn well what it's called. I shoved you into one six months ago so your dumbass could get to the airport. At this point I knew what she was doing. I felt kind of paranoid up until now but she kept pushing and pushing to come back into my home after I threw her out and I was going to push back. DH, well, if you need a place to nap just for a couple of hours. Me, then go check into your hotel, Patricia. Everyone's had a long night. DH knows he almost fucked up real bad. So he just shut up and left the room. I followed. DH and I get home, we crawl into bed, and sleep for exactly one hour before our phones start ringing. It's the gate guard. Okay. So let's back up for a second dash we bought a house in a gated community less than a year ago. To enter into the community you either need a beepy box on your dashboard, or your name needs to be added by a resident of the community to the gate list. Do you see where this is going? Guard calls us and tells us that a car just dropped off a lady who is screaming at him. She is repeating over and over that she is DH's mother and demands to be let in. She is saying that she used to be on the list so there must be a mistake. There's no mistake PP. I took you off that damn thing almost immediately after I exorcised you from my home. Be gone, Satan. DH groans and puts on pants to go wrangle his mother. This is the best part my llamas. So before he can make the approximately one minute drive to the front gate, PP goes ballistic. She charges the little booth that the guards have and starts throwing things, staplers, radios, stationery, all airborne. She got a few good throws in there too. The guards tell me she made contact with a pen cup. One of them suffered a blow to the noggin, slash obviously they call the cops. DH calls me and tells me to get down there because they're about to arrest her. And I say, oh no. She had better call a lawyer. Ha. Huh. Okay. Disclaimer I love my husband very much and I do not feel good about leaving him high and try to deal with the cops but WTF was she thinking just showing up like that? What was the best case scenario in her mind? That we were going to welcome her into our home again and then everybody hugs and drinks hot tea together? Idiot. In the end DH talked them out of pressing charges because she was playing up the lil old lady routine pretty hard. He drove her back to the hotel but that incident made her zero in on the seismic shift in my relationship with her. I didn't even come to the gate to deal with her. She had lost control over me, she could not get to me because she couldn't reach me anymore, either emotionally or physically. And as we all know, this is the recipe for an extinction burst. Bake at 350F for 20 minutes until golden brown and toothpick comes out clean. Eek. This got longer than I expected so I will tell you guys of her second run-in with the cops in part 2.5. Update 2.5, Piercing Patty almost gets arrested the second time. Some of you expressed how disappointing it is that I am back here again and I agree. I truly thought PP and I, were on the mend and that we were going to be one of the lucky ones that survived a just no incident. I wanted to forgive her but I needed time to heal. She, however, did not feel as if I was forgiving fast enough and for the past 6 months or so has been trying to needle herself back into our lives. It began with her asking once a month if she could visit, and then it became every week, and then it became an almost daily chore to tell her, no, you cannot stay with us. We aren't over what you did yet. Like a scab, if you keep picking at me I can never heal. So her presence in my home became my hill to die on. I never lied to protect her feelings, I never gave her the runaround, and every time she asked me directly if she could come stay with us I told her the truth. I do not trust you here anymore because of your actions. But still, she persisted. So after the hilarious gate incident, or as I call it, gate gate, I was stuck in an awkward position. You see, I still wanted to go see Syl in the hospital and make sure Ale had all the tools she needed to do her momming, but I definitely didn't want to interact with PP. Alas, I went anyways because I loved Syl more than I hated PP. Ale needed some rest after all the excitement died down and so I told her to go back to the hotel and I would take an evening shift with Syl. I brought Syl all her favorite junk foods and some fashion magazines. We were busy chatting about some boy she had been seeing and whether he likes her, or like likes her. Ah, to be young again, in Waltz's PP with the worst look on her face. It honestly chilled the room. I don't know how to accurately describe this face but imagine if you spent all day at the salon dropping tons of money on your stylist and colorist and then coming home to your husband saying, I liked it better before. Yeah, it would be that face. It was the kind of disdain only a woman could convey on her face. Hey, you know what? This isn't about me. We are both here for Sil and. I will just deflect, deflect, deflect to ease the tension. 
We can have World War III when we aren't caring for a broken-legged college student. Me, hello, Patricia. I don't know why but I cracks me up to be so formal with her. Like, suck it dash we ain't friends anymore PP, what are you doing here? Sill, we're just hanging out. What are you doing here PP? Where's mom? PP, Elle took a goober to Target, she packed so quickly that she forgot a few things. Seriously, is this what we are calling ride shares now? If I wasn't so annoyed with her, I'd find it endearing. Sill, oh. I'm gonna call her, maybe she can pick up some personal item and some favorite snack for me. Sill gets distracted calling her mom so PP's full attention is on me now. PP, I don't know what I did to make you treat me like this. Me, seriously? Because it happened not that long ago. You broke into my office and compromised my client's privacy. That's what you did. Do you really not remember? I'm actually incredulous. PP, are you still mad about that? I said sorry. Me, yeah, it's kind of a big deal Pat Trish you. And you can say sorry until you're blue in the face, I am not forgetting that it happened. You could have really messed things up for me and DH. PP, well, you can't keep me out of your life forever. I'm DH's mother, I have a right to be in his house. Me, he only owns half of that house Pat Trick saw. Which half do you want access to? The left half or the right half? Ha! Huh. How many ways I could pronounce her name by emphasizing different syllables is a new fun game I play. PP, I would never speak to my mill that way. Me, you don't have a mill? So, like, the top half or the bottom half? We could quarter the home and you could just stay in two quadrants at a time or. Sill gets off the phone with her mom. Click. PP, Sill, I came to bring you dinner. She hands over a bag of McDonald's. Sill, oh, no thanks. I'm kind of full from the stuff mother in paws brought. You can just leave it there. I'll, have some later. PP, well I can't do anything right can I? Mother in paws gets to do everything and I can't do anything. Sill gets the most bewildered look on her face. PP, go ahead and ruin your body with that junk she points to the pile of snacks I brought I am a mother, I know you need real food to get better. Chill lady, chicken nuggets do not have medicinal properties, mother in paws is not even a mother. She will never be a mother. She couldn't do what I did. Whoa. Woo woo it. Okay, this thing just turned into another thing. At this point Sill is tearing up a bit. I mean, she's being yelled at for not eating McDonald's and she's scared. I feel bad because I know that PP's anger is directed towards me and so I get up to leave because I didn't want Sill to have to bear my burden. I'm gathering my things and, splash. PP tossed a big gulp-sized cup full of McDonald's coke at me. Okay, first the fuck of all this purse is Eve Street. Laron so you're basically dead to me for getting the leather wet. And second of all, you were being so loud a second ago that a nurse poked her head in, saw you assault me with your refreshing beverage, and called security. Sill yells at PP to stop. Security comes in and Sill begs them to make her leave. I'm already on my way out because I need to mourn the collateral of war that is my expensive ass handbag. And then it happens. She lunges at me. Not to hit me, but to get closer to point in my face and yell some more. However, that is not how security interpreted the situation and they arm barred her so hard she fell on her ass. Ha ha ha. She gets told that if she does not leave immediately they are calling the police. True to her new MO. She grabs a one of those mauve pink plastic cup that was on Sill's bed table thing and throws in at one of the security guys, and then books IT out of the hospital before they could arrest her. I honestly didn't think she was in any shape to run, but hey, I've been wrong before. It was impressively fast. Up next? The unforgivable thing that led to NC. Update 3, Piercing Patty does the unforgivable thing. Edit, no sass, I am so, so touched by everyone who partook in the I am not a real woman because. Movement in the comments. It was such an amazing show of solidarity to me and those who struggle with infertility. I read every single comment. I had never thought of myself as not a real woman. Even when we got the news from my doctor I just thought of it like a scar or a hair color. It was just a characteristic of my body and I couldn't change it so I wasn't ashamed of it. When PP said the unforgivable thing to me, it was the first time since the diagnosis that I felt so small. Like someone was informing me for the first time that this, in fact, was something to be very embarrassed over and I should lament for the rest of my life over the injustice. Well, I don't and I'm not. I have thousands of friends on the internet PP, and they make me feel 10 feet tall. I don't fit into your little boxy definition of what a woman is and that's okay because your approval would destroy me, you guys crack me up. Okay, in order of the most asked, although I would not say that it was in order of importance, I will answer the following. I had my bag cut, re-dyed, and re-sewn. The YSL survived, but it will never, ever be the same. Syl is doing fine. She is set to make a full physical recovery. Although I think she is still very frightened to drive by herself. I know it gives her anxiety to do simple things like run to the store. Poor girl. Last we left off I am was driving my sticky self back home to DH. I got home, explained what happened, and then I went into my closet, plucked my purses off their shelves one by one until I found the right one, dug into the unlined pocket, lit up one of my emergency cigarettes and had a long, deep drag. 
I was so angry and so humiliated. PP splashed a drink in my face. Like, did I get my own show on the E! Network? If so, when's the check coming? I got bags to replace. DH comes in and holds me for a bit. We talk. I am still trying to understand why she is acting like this. It's very, very aggressive compared to her past behavior. She's usually just extremely annoying. The physical escalation has me very worried. I start to think maybe it is a brain tumor. I will later learn that her only diagnosis is that she is an asshat. DH calls his mom and sets up a meeting. She tries to tell her side of the story but it's honestly so absurd that nothing makes sense and he ends up being even more confused after she tries to explain to him what happened. We absolutely cannot go on like this. As luck would have it, Ale, who is now furious at PP for yelling at her infirm daughter, has kicked her out of the hotel room they shared and now PP has booked a flight back to Southern State because she has nowhere to stay. Don't look at me, bitch. The flight leaves tomorrow evening so we plan to have lunch before we drop her off at the airport. Before I get to lunch I want to share something with you guys. DH and I have been childless, not necessarily child-free but we like to travel, go to bars until late at night, and do exclusively adult things. It was a lifestyle that worked for us for a long time but in the last year or so I've been kind of thinking that maybe I didn't need two guest rooms and that one of them would make a nice nursery you know? We weren't trying, but we weren't not trying either. If it happens, it happens. Well, nothing happened. Nothing happened for a long time. I got insecure and suspicious. Long story short, doctor says it's me. It's fine. Don't do the sympathy thing it makes me feel like I should be sadder than I am and I'm not sad. Okay, that's a lie. I was sad for like, a second. But to be honest, the not knowing was worse. Now I can plan on doing what I always wanted to do, fostering to adopt. No skin off my back. Now back to the lunch. Lord help us all. I have court in the morning so I can't give you guys a verbatim transcript but the gist is this. PP has not saved for retirement. Like, at all. You guys, she works at a job that pays average. But would theoretically would have an amazing retirement plan. However, taking advantage of this retirement plan would require foresight. I guess she just planned to work until she was dead. But then DH put himself through school, and got an amazing career, and got himself a wife that works, and now we are just so rich that of course we would want to raise PP as our own. The end. JK, not the end, so much not the end, all the not the ends, we haven't even started. This delusional cuntcrum thought that when we were ready to have kids she would move in with us and take care of the baby. That was her retirement plan. So now that we know we aren't going to have any biological kids and that the fostering to adopt option may yield in us adopting older kids that don't need a full-time granny helping out, she has lost her retirement plan. In her head, all along, I was going to beg her back into my home because a newborn was going to be more than I could bear alone. She was just waiting me out. I was going to grovel. She. Was. Sure. I guess she really snapped when DH told her we weren't going to have kids. It kind of solidified that she may never be allowed back into the home, at least not via her retirement plan slash nanny gig and she became desperate to get into my house because she viewed it as the home where she would spend her twilight years. Like bitch, I wouldn't even let you spend the duration of the twilight movie in my house. Get out of here with that dumbass idea. Okay side note, she's also in her early 50s and in reasonably good health. I mean, I just saw you run like Usain Bolt from two hospital security guards so. I don't think now is an appropriate retirement age for you. You got a few tax paying years left. PP. I was kind of stunned at lunch so I didn't say much. DH was panicked because he knows it will fall on him to figure it out for her. But we both agreed that this was absolutely, never, ever, going to happen. It's amazing how you've been with someone so long that you can convey that entire message in nothing but a glance. DH told her flatly, Mom, you cannot live with us. We like our life as it is and we don't think it's a good idea to be sharing our. And then, as if on cue, she start crying uncontrollably, loud, heaving sobs. Lol, whatever bro. Keep your crocodile tears away from my club sandwich. It's got three slices of bread so this is a celebration sandwich. I'm not going to let you ruin a three slice day for me. And then she says the unforgivable thing. If your wife was a real woman, I wouldn't have to live on the streets in my old age. Okay um, I'm going to need a fourth slice of bread. You just turned my happy sandwich into a sad sandwich. Uh, ouch. I'm a real woman. Fuck you. That statement really hurt my feelings for some reason. Usually when she talks I just let the words roll right past me but this was an act of war. PP. You can't just violate the Geneva Convention like that and expect no retaliation. Shrug. I kept eating my tiny triangles. Why do they always cut club sandwiches into tiny triangles? I was going to take a beat to address the horrific thing she just said to me. I don't respond to attacks until I know that I can articulately stand up for myself. But the shock left me a little weak. So I'm thinking about how I'm going to respond because I can feel tears well up in my eyes and I know the next time I blink I'll be crying. All of a sudden I'm wearing my jacket. And now my arm is getting yanked. And now DH throwing of cash haphazardly onto the table. Ah. My tiny triangles. I wasn't done. And now I'm in the car. We never responded. I never even said anything to defend myself. He shut my passenger side door and I.
Cried harder than I remember crying in a long time. I knew we were done. I cried because I was relieved. I really thought he'd choose to help her because she was his mother. I thought I was going to have to help her tire her one day if I wanted to stay with him but she did the unforgivable thing and now we are both off the hook. Yay? I'd cow she got to the airport tbh. Probably took a goober. I never thought about that before I started typing this story out. Ha. Huh. When we got home I told him no more. She's blocked on everything and I told the gate guards to call the police immediately if she shows up again. Don't even notify me. She needs to get her own phone plan. Any trips to southern state will not be attended by me. All the money we were giving her was going to stop. He can send her whatever he wants from his discretionary budget but I wasn't going to send her any of my wonky womb money. I'm a real woman goddammit. I don't need to shoot a baby out of my vagina to know that. You can suck my dick. Patrish ER. No contact. Full stop. I don't have any more updates for you guys. That was months ago and her name isn't even whispered in my house. DH doesn't talk about her, although I'm sure she's been begging him for more money. I don't think about her unless I am feeding llamas. And all we are concentrating on is getting approved to be foster parents. I hope my kid marries an attorney when ass slash he grows up so I can relive this saga step by step from the other perspective ha 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 ha. I've been tossing fountain drinks at dartboards for practice. The op literally posted a whole sagas of stories. These are some of the other stories the op posted. Update 4, Piercing Patty and My Engagement Ring. A few of you guys requested some Beck stories about Piercing Patty aka Patricia after my last odyssey on her journey to NC. This is hilarious for two reasons. One, you know there definitely existed Beck and, two, you knew it'd be good enough to retell. Someone recently made a post about a class ring on here and it reminded me of my engagement ring pissing contest with PP. This isn't a full meal llamas, but that's okay because it's bikini season and all we need is a light snack and a cold sangria, hmm? Immediately following my law school graduation, DH, then BF, took me on a long weekend getaway. I'm serious about the immediately part. I basically walked across that stage, took some pictures with my family. We met at local restaurant for a meal and some champagne, and I left for the trip still wearing the most expensive outfit I own my graduation gown, oh god, the student loans. We couldn't go anywhere far because I needed to begin preparing for the bar exam the very next Monday so a weekend was all I could spare to celebrate. DH drove us to a sleepy coastal town and we stayed at one of those B&Bs that have seashell soaps in the bathroom. We spent the entire weekend sleeping in and letting the warmth of the sun wake us, having late night dinners in dim restaurants over good wine and hushed whispers, and, inevitably, arguing whether the seashell soaps were for decoration or utility. It was one of the most romantic trips of my life. On Saturday night after we had one of the funniest seafood meals of our lives, two drunk kids with plastic bibs and crab mallets, we took a walk along the beach to relax a little more before driving back the next day. The sun was just setting and the breeze was perfect, and I guess DH couldn't wait any longer so he popped the question. Except, he wasn't planning on proposing. At least not this weekend. It was always an eventually situation for us, but I didn't really pressure him and we always had the whole sure, when we finished school mentality. But the weekend was just too perfect and uh, I literally just finished school so it was kind of cute he wouldn't wait a moment longer. Now, being as how it was so spontaneous, he didn't have a ring for me, he just slipped off his class ring and proposed with it, I was so happy, you guys. Not because I get to marry the love of my life, but because DH ordered his class ring a few sizes too small and wore it on his pinky and I always thought I made him look like a 1970s pimp ha ha ha. Him giving me his ring took care of the fashion faux pas and it had the added bonus of me being engaged. We called our parents, got the appropriate reactions, minus PP wanting to come see us right away and kind of forgot that we were engaged because I was studying for the bar. Once I was done with that horrid exam I felt giddy. That whole blushing bride thing hit me like a ton of bricks. I was nearing 30 when I finished law school, there was no reason for me to be giggling that much. Finally, I wasn't such a mean bookworm anymore and that meant that PP could visit us because from the moment we told her we were engaged, she was begging to come visit us so we could all celebrate together. So PP comes to town and without any polite small talk, asks to see the ring, I flash it quickly because I know this ain't my real engagement ring so I try not show it off too much knowing that it will confuse people when I get my actual ring. The class ring was just a spur of the moment ring. And what PP didn't know is that after we got back from the trip DH took me to a jeweler to pick out what I wanted. Turns out. I didn't want any of them. And in my high maintenance glory, I got to pick out my own stone and design my own setting. Oh boy, was I glad he didn't plan his proposal. Making my ring was so fun but it would take months to complete. I still plan to wear DH's class ring around a necklace though. It was so sentimental to me, but this bitch, fucking PP. So we are on our way home from the airport and stop for lunch. PP asks to see the ring again and I show her thinking that she's just excited her son's getting married, but no. She asks to try it on. I'm like, uh, maybe later. I'm only human. My spine had to grow one pant leg at a time. During her week with us she kept asking and asking. If I was doing the dishes she would say, oh, you don't want to scratch that beautiful ring, take it off and I'll wear it so you don't lose it. I promise I'll give it back. And then she did this laugh thing that's not exactly a giggle and not exactly a cackle either. She gackled, 
I was so weirded out. I wasn't even annoyed. It was just strange. I knew we were playing a game but I didn't know what the rules were. I mean, you guys know what a class ring looks like don't you? Especially a men's one? Nothing like an engagement ring. It's very masculine. The band and mount usually has engraving or stamp of the graduation year. The stone set into it is usually a dark colored, semi-precious one. It was a cool looking ring but not something I'd consider bridal. So the only explanation I could muster was she wanted to wear it because it came from her son? Ew. Why? Ew. Again. Do you want to be engaged to your son? PP? Barf. So all week I had to guard my ring like it was my prexuous. I honestly didn't even take it off when I slept because I wasn't sure she wasn't going to sneak into our bedroom and slip it on to spite me. I know it sounds paranoid, but PP would not let up with her insistence that she be able to try the class ring on. I felt like I was at Guantanamo. She was asking me about it so relentlessly. But as you all know, if you play bitch games dash you will win bitch prizes. Toward the end of her stay at Hotel de Mother in pause, my jeweler called and my ring was finally ready. Yay. I had been waiting for what felt like an eternity. So we tell PP we needed to run an errand real quick and to watch some Netflix while we are gone. I deliberately left the ring on my nightstand knowing that I just chum shark infested waters. We pick up my ring and it is perfect. A tasteful 1.5 carat oval set in a rose gold paved double band and with two little birthstones, mine and his, set on the inside. The ring really. Felt like mine and no one else's due to the fact that I got to design it and the little birthstone secret we put in. So we got home and PP is on our couch watching TV. She turns to us and waves hello. I'm entering my own home. Why would you wave to me? Ah yes. To bring attention to the fact that you are wearing the class ring. Ha 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 ha. Now, keep in mind she didn't know we were going to pick up my engagement ring. She didn't even know we had another one made because DH doesn't think to talk about stuff like that with his mother and I felt petty all week. So I waltzed right over to her. Grab the hand she is wearing the ring on, her left hand BTW. Second barf, with my right hand, take an amused look at the ring, you ladies know the one. The one where you lightly grab your friend's fingers when they show you their new ring. She's looking kind smug now thinking she's under my skin. She is holding eye contact with me like bitch, what's your next move? So as I am holding her left hand with my right, I drag my left hand down her forearm until she hears a clink. 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 It was the sound of metal on metal. She looks down and bam. I am wearing a brand new diamond her son paid for. It just came from the jeweler too so this thing is refractive AF. Mother in pause hasn't had the opportunity to get any Cheeto powder into the crevices yet, baby. Her eyes widen and this is the moment she knew I was a formidable enemy. I smiled and said, that ring looks gorgeous on you, why don't you keep it? It's worth almost nothing anyway. Ha! Huh. What's DH gonna do? Be mad at me for giving his mother a free ring? I came out smelling like roses. Thank you. Goodbye PP. BTW, she left the ring on my dresser when she left. It was never about the ring. I got engaged to her son and she wanted to assert her dominance in his life. She didn't anticipate that I had seen Tina Fey's mean girls like, 17 times and can out Regina her any day. I still wear the class ring on a necklace, sometimes but I will not let DH have it back because when it puts it on his pinky he develops a fake Italian accent and tries to emulate Godfather style gangsters. Bada bing, bada boom. The witch flew back to southern state on her broom. Update 5, piercing patty on my wedding day. So. This story is a bit of a throwback and I didn't even recognize it as being truly just no until I started lurking here. From my perspective at the time, it was an honest oversight but as we know llamas in just no land, it's absolutely deliberate and your fault if you call them out and also your fault if you ignore their behavior for attention. So away we go back to the year 20xx and today is my wedding day. PP had not been heavily involved with wedding planning, but to be honest neither was I. I hired a friend I knew from college who I trusted, I forwarded her some inspiration boards, and then promptly fucked off because I had no business wedding planning at that stage in my career. Sure, I did the important stuff like food tasting and touring venues but the details, the nitty gritty stuff, was done via her texting me two photos and me texting back, first one or second one. If you have someone you truly, super duper, absolutely fucking lutely trust dash this method of wedding planning is 10 tenths would recommend. So in a way, my wedding was kinda like an extreme version of a surprise party. I mean, there was no other way to do it unfortunately. I was working 70 hour weeks as a young associate, and paying off my enormous student loan debt as a new graduate, and trying to elbow my way into a very exclusive good old boys club at work, and I just didn't care whether we had peonies or lilies. JK, I totally care. Fuck lilies. But you guys get it. I didn't have a lot of room to let PP into the process because I just wasn't the involved bride she wanted me to be. Vailp, as you know, that's grounds for punishment. Although I didn't know it yet, PP was gonna get me back. She thought she was so slick. If I wasn't gonna involve her, she wasn't gonna involve me. So. I had no idea what she was wearing to my wedding. Everybody knows where this story is going. This scenario has less foreshadowing surprise than a Nicholas Sparks novel. Now, before I tell all you llamas what you already know let me give you an teensy, 
Insi detail about myself that I hadn't shared already because I didn't want to be ID'd I'm not a white. Sure, I was born in America but my parents are immigrants and they raised me to not lose my sense of culture from homeland. That was all a long-winded way of telling you guys that brides from homeland were red on their wedding day. I think it's a beautiful tradition and I wanted to emulate my ancestors on my wedding day by wearing a red traditional dress instead of the westernized white gown. Plus, between you and me guys, I just look a lot better in red than I do in white so that's also kinda why I did it. Thank baby Jesus, I had a second culture that had traditions that didn't wash out my skin tone. Prayer hands emoji. So I'm getting hair and makeup done and the photographer is taking all kinds of boudoir shots and the whole hotel suite is abuzz with activity when sudden PP pops in. Uh, what are you doing here PP? My tits are out. Go away PLS. Fine, I'll cover my nipples but only one. You can pick, left or right? Well if you're embarrassed PP, then you should probably not show up to bridal suites without being invited. GRRRRRR. PP makes a big show of wanting to see me before the wedding and showing me her dress. I'm like, cool, I get it. You only have sons and you want to do a pre-wedding moment with a daughter. But can we do this in a bit? I'm kinda in the middle of something here. Nope. It's right now or, or no other option. It's gonna be right now because my name is Patty and I'm the center of the universe. I waved her off and basically spouted something along the lines of sure, put it on and let me see. It was, a white wedding dress. It wasn't a straight up ball gown like I've seen some mills wear on this sub but it was definitely a wedding dress for an older bride. Think, I'm on my fourth wedding but I've only had two grooms vibes. Below the knee length with lots of beading and lace, a keyhole back, a rhinestone cinch belt. I was so blind, I had no idea WTF she was up to. Llamas, I thought she looked nice and I was actually kind of relieved she wasn't going to show up in something more QVC-like. It was, by all accounts, an elegant dress if you wanted to remarry someone else now that your first husband confirmed his years-long affair with his receptionist. I smiled at PP, told her she looked stunning, and asked if she would like to see me in my dress. I thought we were bonding. Poor, naive, mother in pause, PP says yes and so I go to the other room with my mom so she can help me into my dress and we emerge victorious. I thought I shined up like a new penny. I had never, before or since, felt that beautiful. Everyone in that room was tearing up and gushing but my photographer sent me some shots of PP's face looking like she just stepped in dog poo with her new Manola Blonix. I mean, her face was bad. I had to blur the background on some and crop her out completely for a few of the shots. PP had no idea was I going traditional with my dress. It never even occurred to her that wedding dresses could be in any color but white. Yeah, they can you ethnocentric bitch. She was trying to upstage me but due to her inability to google my homeland, she kinda just looked like a jackass. How could she tantrum though? It would require that she admits she was trying to piss off the bride. The situation was so good and juicy I was mad I didn't even plan it. Not that I planned anything that day, lol. Bonus, in Homeland, you actually wear white to funerals. My grandma, god bless her heart, doesn't speak that much English. Since grandma loves to learn about American traditions so much, she thought everyone else would like her learn about her traditions too. She was just trying to make small talk with her new family-in-law by informing PP of our culture. What grandma meant to say to PP was, in my country we wear white to funerals. What actually came out of her sweet, adorable mouth was you look dead. I deed when I heard this story from a cousin. Ha 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 ha. Honestly, when I think about it sometimes it still makes me wheeze with laughter. And that's how PP tried to ruin my wedding but didn't and also couldn't complain about it without looking like a psychopath who tried to ruin a wedding. The end.